car. Just kind of working out where we're at, so let's go with that. You know what, I really need a screen over there so that I'm not looking to that direction um, and almost behind me to be honest, um, all the time. Okay, so I can keep that up there. There we go. Um, where were we? So we got the front set up. Now I did notice if the arms are sticking up slightly, this actually doesn't go all the way to the left and the right. So that was interesting. Um, it also makes it great for holding it in place while I'm working on it. So I'm going to put the arms up for the moment. Uh, it looks like we are putting on the front discs and the front knuckles. Uh, I'm going to go with yes. Why not? So let's pull them out. I don't even know what that is. Um, and I think we'll just dump out everything here. Because why not? Remember everyone, I do my own stunts. So let's get those ball bearings first. I think we might ream them in. I Can you see it here? You probably can't. So I did actually clean up my tools uh, and got a metal box to put them in. This is only, well, I was going to say this is a temporary solution, but I did actually order another box, but that's actually not for tools, so maybe this is a permanent solution. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, just to put all my parts in. I think I talk about, talked about that in the last video. Um, no, actually I want that. But I did want to clean up my tools because uh, as, I, as you probably have seen in other streams, uh, I tend to lose them. So I figure if I've got a place to put them, that might actually help on that front. So we'll see if that is actually the truth or not. Now I'm a bit concerned about the 205. I only need two of those likely, but from memory we lost one of those and I don't, I haven't found it um, while I've been working today. Because I was pretty sure I would have run over it at some point and rediscovered it that way, but that's not happened. Okay, so three of those, three of those, and we're left with, I'm going to assume one spare. And just to make sure, I'm going to quickly check that I, yeah, I did install them on everything. So we're good there. So let's get the bearings in first. And I think we'll just use the end of the screwdriver there. And then swap out for something a bit better. Oh, cool, clicks in. Kind of good. Nice solid action there. I want to get the ball bearings in before I put the disc brakes in. I've got a feeling I can do it the other way around, but I don't want to have to unscrew them if I'm wrong. There's no point in taking a risk. Okay, so these then mount like that, I think, yes, there you go. Okay, so you can put the bearings in before you put the disc brakes because the uh, disc brake fits on the outside of the arm, not the uh, over the top of it, so that's nice. And am I correct in assuming that's notched? It felt notched. No, it's not notched. Okay. So in that case, I'm going to put these screws through initially to make this a bit easier to assemble. This is definitely going to be a shorter stream. I um, went to quickly go make some dinner and then realized it was still cold enough that it needed to be dethawed. So it's just sitting there dethawing in a heat bath at the moment, and uh, that's going to be the limiting factor for tonight. Once again, very, very nippy here today. I wouldn't say it was cold, just uncomfortable. Not quite warm enough to heat everything up. Not quite... Sorry, not cold enough to heat everything up, not warm enough to... Uh, be able to sit there without a jumper. Um, come on. So my hands are going to be a bit icy at the moment. 
and it's going to make things a tiny bit difficult in the assembly today. Um, so I did see an interesting video today about uh, brushed DC motors and where they're useful. Now I pretty much upgrade everything exclusively to brushless and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, the brush motors they wear out because of the uh, the brushes <laughs> as the name implies um, and I tend to find the brushless motors just run a bit smoother and a bit more power efficient and I, I do tend to find that the ESCs for the uh, was putting it that way yes I was the ESCs for the brushless motors are just a bit better um, and if I'm upgrading the ESC I might as, might as well go all the way in so um, it's been a bit harder on the Mini Z side of things because uh, at least with the Kyosho Mini Zs or things in from Kyosho in the Mini Z scale um, the base options brushed so I do have a couple of aftermarket XP motors and they've actually been pretty good but uh, I definitely like with the brushless motors how the car just keeps on going rolling forward uh, like there's a lot less resistance on the brushless um, which is kind of nice and for a lot of chassis, that's kind of good. And like I've mentioned in other videos, it's one of the things I didn't like about the K989. A lot of stuff bound, and it was a brushed motor setup, and so it didn't. I had to be on the throttle the entire time, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Especially with the NB4, you can put it in. You can use the petrol motor feature called uh, throttle up, which um, means that when you let off the accelerator, it never lets off fully on the throttle. Uh, so the motor can sit there and idle basically and I have used that to great effect to try and work around the fact that some cars uh, Have a bit of resistance in the drivetrain by keeping the uh, the drivetrain or more specifically keeping the engine energized the, the coils and energized so it just um, Not enough to move the car, but just enough to overcome a lot of the frictional forces uh, and that does help um, but it's very very power dependent so as your uh, if you set it while the car is on low power what ends up happening is you swap to a high uh, a freshly charged battery and then the car starts moving under that same power which may or may not be what you want um, and I've used both so I tried drifting with the creep forward where the car did actually move forward a bit um, and that's great until you want to stop. So you definitely need to bind a button to enable and disable that feature. Um, but I have been considering with the NB4, what can I do with alternate modes and using buttons to do specific things so that as the car loses battery power, uh, I can swap to a different, mo uh, different modes to compensate. For the throttle, it's not really re worth it, but especially when I get to very, very low power, my servos tend to cut out a bit. And I keep on wanting to race, but in actual fact, what I should probably do is just stop racing at that point and uh, come back in. So that's away from... Yeah, I really wonder if anyone thought about how these brake pads are orientated or if I've just put them all on backwards. Or mixed them. I might have mixed them, but that's fine. I um. I'll be taking these off at a later date and uh, painting them silver. So the other thing I've tried to do with the NB4 controller, and this is why I like the programmable controllers, is um, chain, playing around with the key bindings and specifically the mixes. So what I've been doing is assigning an auxiliary unused channel um, to a one of the switches, the either the, the buttons as an on-off switch or a three-position switch and then mixing that into the throttle. So at one point I did have an emulated handbrake where I could touch a button and it would just put the car into maximum reverse uh, to emulate that. And it was very, very easy for me to adjust the, uh, the strength by adjusting the, uh, the amount of mix in there. Um, so we'll be playing a bit more with that with the drift cars. Um, I've also been drifting on a high grip surface and I had some comments about that that it may not be the right surface but what I was doing that for was just to slow the back end coming around on the cars 
and trying to drift without a servo. And I've had mixed success with that. I think I'm turning the steering a bit too quickly. Um, so I'm going to go back to a low grip surface. But the problem I had with the low grip surface was the bottom of the DIZ V2 would dig into that. So it would ca catch the corner of a screw or something and then dig in. Um, and I wasn't going to try and tighten the screws to get them flat with the bottom of the chassis. So I might go and install a piece of paper on the bottom or something like that just to smooth over those gaps and so it doesn't catch on the edges of them. Uh, and then when it digs in, it would just in immediately turn sideways or and just basically be useless. So in many cases, it just got stuck. So there's not a lot of crown clearance under the... Um, the DRZ V2. Um, and so you have to get the track perfectly flat. And that was part of the issue. I wasn't keeping the track perfectly flat. Okay. Test, test, test. Just need to make sure I'm getting the uh, audio levels right as well. Okay. So I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. We're now doing those and the balls. So let's grab out the bigger balls first because I want to do them. one back in there cool so we will put the screw away a screwdriver away and I didn't put this away but that's fine I'm very very tempted to keep at least like one a maximum of one or two tools out because there's one or two tools I use uh, all the time and I don't necessarily mind them laying around the table as long as I can find them quickly In fact, that was a bit of a problem when I was working on the DJI FPV stuff earlier. I got a new uh, faceplate for it that does analog. Um, and I couldn't find the little body to hold out the uh, hold the analog receiver. Um, so I picked up an analog mod for a couple of reasons on the DJI FPV. And this may seem a, a bit unrelated, but bear with me for a moment. Um, all the mini drones are analog. And then for the bigger ones, I chuck a audio visual system on it like that. So I get 1080p, um, 120 frames per second, uh, or no, no, 70, 90 frames per second, and then 70, 720p at 120 frames per second. And um, it really makes a difference over 60 FPS. It's um, especially with high speed movement, that's when you really notice it. Um, but I've got a, still got a lot of analog kit. Uh, that these days I'm not using a lot of. Oh, maybe that's just bent backwards. Um, and so I've noticed that that didn't look like it went in straight, but I don't think the plastics are... I think what the top plastic is actually... Yeah, so that's offset, and that's that'd be for the camber, caster, the caster. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so I've got the still got a lot of analog receivers, and the analog receivers weigh nothing uh, compared to the DJI stuff. The DJI stuff gets very, very hot very, very quickly and uh, draws a lot of power. Um, and especially the smallest unit I've got actually needs an active fan on it unless you're actually moving. And for the Mini Zs, I'm pretty sure I'd have to install a fan. Um, so on the 4x4, you'll see I've got some blue tack on top. And then I used to stick the FPV to the back. And there's enough room under the uh, the Hummer to install it. But for some of the MR03 bodies, there isn't a lot of space. Or the weight is so dramatic. Because I think from memory it's about 80 grams or something. Or even over 100 grams. Uh, that it affects the performance of the car. Um, but the analog stuff is like 20 grams. So by having an analog receiver, uh, I can still have that same experience of driving around my living room just in a bit lower fidelity and i say a lower fidelity it's a pretty massive drop to be honest but i don't really mind that depends what i'm trying to do um but the fpv on the mini z's are fun the uh, the real trick is to around the course um label the course correctly so if it's a left turn use one color sticker if it's a right turn use a different color sticker Mark your braking points. Um, not necessarily exactly where you need to brake, but just having uh, stickers at a regular interval, either on the ground or on the sides. Probably on the ground would be better. Um, just to, because you've got to remember your depth perception is going to be completely gone. Uh, and that'll definitely help quite a bit. 
Okay, so now we want these. Um, and the funny thing is that you may not think it's bad, and it's probably not that bad for some people, but you might find you're actually fairly inconsistent in your breaking points. Um, and then just adding those uh, stickers on the ground um, is probably one of the best ones you can do to increase your performance in that sort of scenario. But uh, crawling, uh, however, with FPV is an incredible experience. Um, I've been playing around with mounting the DJI camera on two servos so I can actually look left and right and up and down. Um, but the real trick is to mount your servos in such a way that when you tilt down, you actually end up causing the unit and the camera to lean over and so you get a better look down. Um, and that means you can get uh, a better look across your front, uh, across the front of the car and where your wheels are placed. Because looking down is not enough. Getting, having the camera back up and go above and look down is better than just tilting down. So um, you can do that with steering geometries and everything. The best way to do it, funnily enough, is with paper clips. Um, and do I have it here? Um, you might not be able to see it on camera. Probably not, actually. But I've actually got a paper clip right there um, that I'm using as uh, a... Um, I can't even remember what it's called now. Basically, it stiffens the suspension up and it gives the servo something to push against when it's turning. So you get slightly more pre precise steering. That one was a failed experiment. Um, it's just probably about a millimeter too long. Uh, but it proved that general concept is fine. The great thing about it is I can just cut it with uh, paper clips with side cutters and it's more than strong enough. So from a fabrication point of view and do it DIY, it's great. Um, whereas like hardened steel or other bolts, you need specialist tools, which I do actually have, funny enough, for my bikes. Um, if you didn't know, I'm actually a very, very big bike enthusiast especially small folding bikes and electric bikes. Um, so you may wonder, like, how does he know so much about electronics if you've watched any of my other videos and where does all that knowledge come from? And it's like, I used to build high power electric bikes as a hobby. Um, and to be honest, it was probably cheaper than Mini Z all said, mainly because you're normally stuck waiting on parts for months. Um, but uh, one of my favorite ones, like one of the first bikes I built was actually two wheel drive. So it had a, mo a motor in the front wheel and the rear wheel, um, and they were geared. And that thing used to fly up hills. Um, it was incredible. You could chuck any amount of load on the back and it would just carry it along quite nicely. So that goes in there. We may do that first. And then we'll put these screws in and put the center mount in. And then we'll do the arms. Okay, that's pretty simple. So yeah, uh, definitely love my e-bikes. I still keep up to speed on them and I just picked up, funnily enough, I picked up a commercial e-bike this time. I didn't build it myself. And the, oh, actually I've still got to put those screws in, don't I? And the reason for that is it was an e-bike I always wanted from um, Stealth Electric. Um, but I just wanted something where the fit and finish was a bit better. And the nice thing about that platform I oh, say so that bike is it's a, a nice platform to build on later. So if I decide I don't like the bike or want a bit more power or something like that, um, I can just drop the parts out and swap them with my own speed controller and all of that jazz. Um, so yeah, my original e-bike was uh, two kilowatt, one kilowatt at the back and a kilowatt at the rear. Um, and it, uh, under power it would understeer a bit, but it wasn't actually too bad and uh, if you look around online you'll see a lot of people commenting on keeping the front and rear motor in sync and I didn't really bother. Um, the uh, speed controllers were closely matched and good enough that it never was really much of an issue. It definitely contributed to the, under, uh, the oversteer problem um, because I suspect the front wheel was a the, sorry, I suspect the rear wheel might have been a bit faster than the front wheel. Um, but it was always possible to just let off the accelerator and uh, in the turn. It wasn't too much of an issue. And then just power out of the turn. 
it did ride slightly differently to a normal bike because of that and it was a bit heavy but uh, that's one of the reasons why I like folding chassis because that bike was a folding chassis um, and it's just due to the way that they're shaped that makes them a bit makes folding chassis nice candidates for experimentation like that okay that looks good um, but the other one I do have is a Xiaomi uh, which is X A I X uh, M-A-I, from memory. Uh, it's Korean, South Korean brand. Uh, they normally do electronics and phones. You probably know them as a phone manufacturer, but they've uh, actually been getting into the e-bike uh, world as well. So that isn't a bad e-bike. Um, ever since I bought it, it's almost doubled in price because I got a great deal on eBay uh, and then did some mods for it. So I only just changed the tires and I swapped the brakes around because I, I prefer reverse, reverse braking. Um, but then I decided to go for an unpowered bike and ended up with a Brompton and the Brompton has been absolutely incredible um, I've got an incredibly heavily modified Brompton that said uh, so a custom built uh, titanium chassis not not just the custom from Brompton so the, the titanium from Brompton but a full third party Brompton frame um, and the weight was definitely sub 10 kilograms. I think I actually had the weight down at low nines. And so to lift it and carry that up and down stairs, because I live um, uh, up a couple of flights of stairs, um, made things a lot easier and a lot nicer day to day. So I've noticed we are going to have to enlarge these um, ball ends a bit, which is fine. We know the technique because we learned that from the Atomic. Except I probably don't have the enlargement tool I was using previously. Unless I put it here in my little... I'm going to bump the camera in my... Aren't I? There we go. Um, I'm not seeing it. Did I pack it away? I think I did. That presents a bit of a problem, but that's fine. We can improvise what's got a hole in it. In fact, the screwdriver will fit over perfect. Well, actually, that's an electric screwdriver with a planetary gear set. So let's use something that's solid metal instead. There we go. Push down a bit. And then we fit it. So yeah, Brompton's definitely been very, very nice. I've liked that one a lot. Actually, are these directional? I hope they're not. Doesn't seem to indicate, so I'm just going to go off the screw pattern for the brakes. Oh, okay, that's really... That's really tight. I wasn't expecting that at all. All the other ball ends have been near perfect, so... What's the time? Okay, we should be about 20 minutes in. Yeah, 23, that's good. So I'm definitely not gonna go longer than an hour here. Nice short stream. Yeah, that's really... So the arms move up and down nicely, which is good. I haven't done any more work on them because I basically gave yeah, I gave up. I was trying to avoid saying that, but I, I gave up. Um, it's just more effort than I wanted to invest at this point in time. And I know with the amount of friction that's there, um, which isn't a lot, uh, it's like I didn't know if I actually wanted to bother trying to overcome that. There's going to be a lot of effort for not a lot of gain when the suspension was going to be able to easily overpower that. So. So I'm just working it out, working it manually. Because that seems to be working a bit. We definitely want to be pushing down on the shiny side so that we're expanding the non-shiny side. And the reason for that is if you push down on the shiny side, so if you expand the shiny side, the ball is just going to drop out easier. Okay, 
We're getting there. We're not quite there, but I can feel it smoothing out. And I've got another two, oh, another four ball heads coming up after these two, so that's not going to be fun. Um, yeah, a tiny bit more. Is there a better way to do this? Probably not. Just looking at my tools, yeah, it doesn't look like I've got, probably need a, I'm probably getting to the point where I need a proper ball end reamer now, like I'm doing enough ball ends that I wouldn't mind just doing it properly and quickly. Okay, so I'm pushing till I actually feel the plastic to form. If I move it like that, it does seem to, yeah, in the moment I stop, it doesn't. Okay. A bit more force that time. Um, so what else have I done? So today I experimented a bit more with the, uh, the Gecko 2.4 chassis, so the bigger one. And I was basically looking at how, how high the car sits and where I want to sit it. So I'm pretty happy with where it sits currently. But I was experimenting, do I want to get more, do I want more clearance in the middle? I suspect the answer to that's actually yes. So. If I let the arms fall down further, there isn't a maximum um, air, or what do I say? They can only go down so far. Um, but at, when I do that, it gives me the clearance I want at the bottom, but it puts the chassis well above the wheels. And having a look at the Dakar rally trucks, um, I still need to look at what the clearance in the middle of them is. So I'll check the proportions and the proportions seem right. Uh, in terms of uh, wheelbase wheel and the, uh, the width as well. But, um, okay, that's finally freeing up. Uh, but I, I need to work out the, the height and it seems like the bumper bars were aligned with the top of the wheels, which seem to be aligned with the wheel rails. So given that this dips down in the middle, uh, maybe if I do drop the wheels down, that will align properly rather than aligning to that, but uh, I'll have to fiddle around with that a bit more. Um, I want it to be realistic, as realistic as I can make it, but I'm not going to try and force that point either. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I probably want more travel just because I do intend to take this off-road and uh, as you scale things down, you've normally got to scale things up like the suspension. So you probably need, as you go down in size, you actually need better suspension than normal and you need more travel than normal. Um, and so there's that trade-off between realism at a different scale uh, and what works at the scale you're operating at. So normally that would be acceptable um, in terms of friction. The problem I have is if you add all the frictions up, that's going to be too much. So I'm already taking a hit on the suspension for the swing arms. Um, and it's not much, it's actually less than the ball joint, but I'm still paying a cost for that. So you can see it's going down on its own when it's got a bit of weight behind it, but there's still a bit of friction and force there. Uh, so let's pop that out. Um, do I have something better for resizing or reaming it? In fact, maybe I can get away with a quick adjustment with scalpel. I'm interested to see if that does anything. So I'm using that one, aren't I? And I want that ball there. Not really. So we're going to do the plastic rimming technique. Um, is that going to work? No. 
could use an actual reamer, but no. Okay. Make sure we've got the safety cap on the soldering up. Sorry, the uh, what is that? The scalpel. Okay. If I'm forgetting words, I'm glad I'm keeping this session short because it means I'm very, very tired. And I have an early start tomorrow as well, which is not going to be fun. So. Actually, did I put that in here? Yes, I did. Is this a bit of reaming tool? It might actually be. I don't think the screwdriver is actually doing the best job in reaming out the plastic. Uh, there we go. So back to an earlier topic, so this doesn't get too boring. Um, I need to play around with the MB4 controller a bit more and the programmable functions on it, just to see what I can do uh, in terms of making my life drifting for, you know, in terms of drifting easier. Like I do like the idea of a handbrake a lot and I've experimented with uh, using the same thing in reverse so rather than applying braking applying acceleration to do launch control so i uh, experimented a bit and i actually found that um, if you let the controller go from zero to 100 by using a button and then what you do is you hold how did i do it yeah i i had the i, I just pushed the button and because it was a transition point i could just hold it just before the button and then I'd pull it in and immediately go to 100%. Um, and that was a bit faster. Uh, it turns out there's quite a bit of delay when pulling your finger to go from 0 to 100%. Um, and so it, just give, it might give you a tiny advantage, but it also caused the car to spin out uh, at a moment's notice. Um, it is actually possible to apply too much acceleration. Okay, I think we're actually going to go from the bottom now that it looks like we've got the top working pretty well. Just ever so slightly, that it might solve our problem very, very quickly. Good. Uh, this is a slow part of tuning these chassis, isn't it? What's the other alternative? There's not a lot, unfortunately. Do I have anything useful laying around? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, I don't like uploading videos like this, but I do want to document the entire process. So there is that. Um, I am going to try and do an abbreviated video where it's got all the uh, the build footage at a 10 speed um, effectively so that 12 hours of footage can become, or like 10 hours worth of footage can become like 12 minutes or I can't remember what the math was but I think it worked out to roughly that um, and then I might do my review on top of that um, just so that people wanting people wanting something a bit more overall process wise rather than individual tweaking and me talking about silly things for hours on end while I pull my hair out over why these ball ends are so difficult to do um, yeah basically satisfying everyone Which I've been told doesn't really work in the real world, but I can try. So it was really, really nice to see as well. The um, I'm up to was it 125 subs as of this afternoon. Uh, so that's been incredible. Um, the Mini Z community is definitely amazing. Um, I do need to work about how I can promote the channel a bit better uh, and what I'm actually willing to do to promote the channel. Now, this may seem like an interesting question, but sorry, an interesting problem, but I really hate the uh, please like and subscribe stuff that everyone do does. And that's not a hint to like or subscribe. If you do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. Um, but I, I hate that it's become a thing on YouTube where everyone says it, no matter how bad their videos are. 
Um, that's a bit, bit of tongue in cheek, but I, I saw some particularly bad videos today that were asking everyone to like and subscribe and the, uh, the quality of the videos was not quite there to justify that. Um, but it's become this in pervasive thing on uh, YouTube and I'm really not a big fan of it. So oh, that's a bit of a better fit. So I'm working on alternatives. Um, you will see that in the bottom corner, yeah, I do have some links and unfortunately it looks like it's white on white so you can't read them very, very well. Um, but that's more about people on Twitch wanting to get quick access to my content. And on the advertising side on YouTube, there's a couple of ways to do it. I mean, you can give them money to advertise your, um, your, uh, your channel or your video. Um, but to be honest, I'm getting pretty decent click rates anyway. Uh, the most of my traffic is actually coming from people doing YouTube searches for DIZV2 or my GL Racing uh, default setup video speed test where it hits about 60 kilometers an hour. Um, and that wasn't faked, by the way. That was I literally just built it and then chucked it on the speedo because I was interested and it turns out it was super quick. And that's not even the fastest motor I can chuck into that thing either. So that, that gets me a lot of views, but um, I've considered Facebook. I'm actually not on Facebook because I don't want that hassle in my life and I never have. So I've never had a Facebook account. And the other thing is like, I, I like to compartmentalize things. And uh, Facebook really doesn't like you doing that. It just wants you to have one public image. So what I want to show my friends um, is not what I want to show my family, for example. Not everyone in my family is interested in my hobbies, for example, but a lot of my friends are interested in my hobby. Facebook is not a good medium to do that. Well, it is running smoothly. I might just try and... Maybe I can talk it a bit. So maybe it's time to look at like a brand, oh, a brand account or something like that, like a business account I've seen. Because I don't necessarily want an account for myself. And funnily enough, the channel you're watching now, at the moment, if you're watching on YouTube, is actually not my account. It's a brand account um, or a channel account. And that doesn't really mean anything because I, I, that's what I use for my day-to-day -day stuff. But it gives me a bit more uh, layout. It gives me some more options in terms of layout on the, uh, the channel screen that you see. That's really not working at all. Um, yeah, so maybe it's time to get a Facebook account and start advertising there. Because they, so I ran the stats. About, I think, 18% of my traffic comes from external sites. And when I did the original check, about 25% of that was Facebook. And then I posted to Reddit, and it turns out that now Reddit is a lot more than that. So, I mean, I could optimize for Reddit, but I think, from what I've heard, there's a lot of mini-Z guys on Facebook, and maybe that's where I need to be posting. I also found a couple of forums, which is, I, I tend to prefer forums and that sort of thing. And um, seeing if there's an opportunity to post there, and what I mean by an opportunity to post there is, there's nothing stopping me posting there, but what I want to do is only post there if that's in the style of everyone posting there. Like, I don't want there to be no YouTube videos or people posting their, their personal content and then to start flooding it with my videos. I'd rather it be established that that's an okay thing to do. With Reddit, it's fine. In fact, I normally post other people's content, not so much my own. Um, Facebook, I'm going to assume that's the thing there as well. Um, but yeah, I, I there's a couple of things... As I said, the, there's a couple of practices I agree with. The YouTube like and subscribe stuff, really, every time someone say, says that, it sends a shiver down my spine. Um, and I'm definitely not okay with doing that. Uh, and this channel is never going to be big enough where doing that is going to get me like another thousand subscribers. So I'm willing to compromise uh, on subscribers just for my own... I don't want to call it ethics. Uh, peace of mind. I was going to say ethics, but peace of mind is what I um, would call it. Like, I think there's a way you should approach advertising. And even if it's going to get me less people, um, I'm happy with that. Because I, I, some people in marketing just have no concept of personal boundaries or anything like that. 
like you could turn up to their house in the middle of the night to prove a point that it's all creepy and they just take it as an opportunity to try and sell you something and think nothing of it. Actually, they'd probably be happy that you came to them. Okay, I'm going to call that. I'm going to be happy with that and work on the other side because otherwise we're going to be here all night. Um, and I'm starting to ramble. So I don't know currently what marketing that I'm happy with looks like. There's a couple of things I want to do, and I mean in terms of my own channel. There's a couple of things I want to do for other channels. So I've been very, very tempted to post like a channel of the week um, or a channel that I think has done something cool or a video like that and not feature it on my channel, but actually link to it. And just get some of the other mini Z uh, guys some uh, exposure because uh, some guys are doing some pretty awesome stuff. And especially guys who are non-English speakers have some incredibly good videos. Um, I actually speak multiple languages. Uh, well, actually, I understand multiple languages. I wouldn't say I speak it. Um, and so I don't always need Google Translate for uh, some of the content I watch. But um, searching for that stuff can be a bit difficult. Uh, so it'd be nice if, uh, and like actually discovering it can be difficult because uh, there seems to be language bubbles in terms of the YouTube search. Oh, that worked perfectly. Um, but if I've already found that content, there's no reason why I couldn't just share that with everyone and uh, overcome that hurdle. So if that worked, why can't I just do that now with this site? So yeah, maybe we'll feature like a YouTube channel every week uh, of someone who could do with a bit more exposure or who's doing something cool um, just in the community. I think that'd be rather nice. So that'd be, that takes care of the, we're now advertising for other people, which I'm fine with. Um, that goes down, that goes down. Oh, I'm just go up. So yeah, we might proceed with that, but that doesn't still solve. How do I get more visibility of my channel? Um, now, if you look at Beaver's hobby, I'm going to say that's the upper limit for Mini Z style RC cars. Um, I need to go have a look because I'm pretty sure there's people with more views than him. Um, but it also wouldn't surprise me if they're also doing things beyond Mini Z's. So working out what the market is, is one part of that. In fact, I think from memory, he's got 13,000 subscribers. And I think BMR2 has got 1.09 last time I checked. Um, so those are rough numbers that we can work in. Um, that's not going to make you a lot of money. Uh, you're not going to make money off YouTube. That's basically the conclusion I've come to, but I'm also totally okay with that. Um, once again, I'm rambling, <laughs> so bear with me while I gather my thoughts. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so that's how we can measure our success. It's like once we start hitting those numbers, we either find new people and bring them into the community and enlarge the community as a whole, or we know we've made, made it um, once we start hitting those numbers. Um, and that any additional effort on that front is likely not to produce the results we want, um, or it's going to be a lot of effort for very, very little gain. So... Now that I understand the boundaries and I've got a rough idea of what I am and or what I'm not willing to do, I have to start thinking about what I can do. And uh, one of the reasons I'm going over this um, is not just for my benefit, but I'm sure there's a lot of people wondering how can they grow their channel? How can they get more views and that sort of thing? My big question to you in that case would be why? Why do you want to do that? In my particular case, the reason I'm doing that is that I want to... Oh, let's go to that. Okay, I'll put them aside. Uh, I want to help people. Um, I had a couple of other sub-goals in mind, but I've already achieved them. Um, long term, I want to become a manufacturer of mini RC car chassis, uh, or at least make custom parts for them, or even offer a build service. Like Part of the enjoyment I get out of this hobby is actually building the cars. Um, so I'd have no problems with uh, building, um, doing a build video for someone and uh, making the vehicle and then sending it to them when done. The only problem is that that's going to be very, very pricey because unfortunately my time is not cheap. 
um, and I don't have a lot of it for various reasons. Uh, but if I can work out how to do it quickly, maybe that's a possibility down the track. Um, yep, so uh, where was I going? I want to help people. Um, I've got some knowledge that other people I thought was common, but it turns out it's not. Unfortunately, that's the story of my life. I get that at work on almost a daily basis. Like, I'll go, oh, I thought you knew that. And it's like, what are you talking about? That's like an advanced subject they just don't teach. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so videos are a good way to try and get that across uh, and I, I've been very much been trying to reduce my editing costs as well which is why these streams are so raw um, and unedited uh, at least at the moment it's just generating a whole lot of um, it's recorded material for me to go off and edit later when I do a more concise like review video or something like that um, but uh, yeah, helping people is my main goal. Like uh, on the Reddit side of things, I tried everything I could to try and grow the amount of people in that community. And we're actually heading towards 1,000 people there, which is an incredible audience. And today I saw people asking like, oh, where's a club in my local area? Um, and people were, rep were replying like the, the channel has actually gotten to a point now where I don't have to force myself to post regular content on an almost daily basis for there to be interesting things to come back to on the, the um, Mini Z subreddit. It's pretty much maintaining itself at this point. 16.2 uh, mil. Uh, which is great. Um, that's a lot le less effort for me, but uh, it means that people sort of believe in it and they've been able to. Well, let's go all the way in. Oh, no, so screw that. Um, it, it means people are asking questions and having conversations and everything, which is exactly what I wanted to achieve. So mission accomplished there. Um, it's not all my work, uh, but anyone, literally anyone who's posted to the uh, Mini Z subreddit, you've definitely helped make that great. And the amount of subscribers to it now is just proves that um, all that hard work that everyone has done has paid off. Um, and in my, my case, it's a substitute for not having a Facebook account. So um, I've begun advertising on there. I always thought it was a bit scummy advertising your own content on there, but I've kind of got over that. Um, I think if you're just posting your own com uh, content and that's it, that's it seems like in some areas of uh, Reddit that's frowned upon and I can fully understand why that is. Um, but I've been able to maintain a fairly good balance of other people's content um, and my own content. And I definitely don't plan to uh, post all my stuff there. It's just whenever I'm doing something a bit unique or a bit interesting, I'll go off and post it there and um, laugh as I get an influx of viewers. Uh, not necessarily subscribers, and that's the interesting thing. So um, my videos have a very, very high click-through rate. So the more I can optimize them on YouTube to be discoverable, the better my channel will actually do. And this comes back to that marketing thing. So my click rate is in double digits. Um, at a minimum, it's about 10%. And at a, I've seen it at 25%. In fact, early on in my videos, it's actually normally about 50%. Um, but for most companies, a click-through rate of like 2 to 3%. Um, is phenomenal so I've got a very very small sample size and I'm targeting a very very specific subsection of YouTube uh, that already has an established community um, so effectively I know my audience well and I'm catering towards them um, but maybe I need to go a bit wider which is why I included the GK24 videos because there's not a lot of information on that chassis at all and it's a great chassis um, but where I'm hoping to go with that is scratch building of bodies and try and bring the modeling community. Oh, that, that moves really, really nice. Try and bring the modeling community into my channel and mini Z's in general. Um, cause I find that as long as I'm providing, I hate using this word, as long as I'm providing value to them or something interesting to watch and they're getting something out of it, uh, or getting a lot out of it, I, I'm fine with that. So if the modeling community, community wants me to see, to do modeling stuff 
and they may get interested in the mini Z's, then I think I've made everyone happy. And that would effectively grow the community. That is actually one way you can tackle uh, community growth and therefore growing my channel. Because um, I'm a lot more focused on growing the community than I am on growing my YouTube channel. I'm always going to be uploading videos. That's not a problem. Um, there may be no one watching them, uh, but I'm totally fine with that. Uh, it's nice if someone is watching them. But I think I don't want people to watch videos if there's nothing, if they don't get anything out of it. Um, I'm trying to find out where that is. It actually shouldn't be a question you have to answer, but uh, unfortunately it can sometimes. I'm just going to ignore the fact that I knocked all my tools off my table and into a box. And uh, yeah, totally didn't do that. Great, that's going to be painful to clean up. Luckily, I don't think I need any tools from there for the rest of this. But And I'll probably be finishing up. Yeah, shortly anyway. So we'll see how much I can get. I want to try and finish off this front end in this session. So, And actually make some sense, because I've got a feeling I haven't made much sense during this video. But ethical marketing, that's a hard one. Um, yeah. I've dealt with a lot of marketing people day to day. I don't want to say they're unethical, but they're very, very difficult people to deal with. Uh, they believe and aspire to things that differ to my own sense of morals. And uh, squaring that up and releasing something that... I was going to say, you, you actually, to be honest, you normally don't get the opportunity to uh, negotiate and come up with something acceptable. They normally just go off and do it without permission uh, so let's twist that off and then screw that back in because it's a reverse thread but uh, it's been interesting navigating the um the discovery stuff so the bit shout out from bmr3 really really helped i was already picking up some for velocity but that's uh just helped it even more so shout outs to different mini z streamers definitely helps um especially when you're at the 1k mark so i don't have the numbers up and i might do a, a video on my youtube stats because they will probably be interesting to some people who are starting out um and i gaze at them constantly uh because i find them mesmerizing but um cool that works uh i've picked up about i can't 25 subscribers in the last 28 days and you can definitely see some spikes around the release of the video from BMR3. Not super massive, but it's definitely helped. And it's maintained velocity for the next couple of days afterwards as well. In fact, I'm still seeing that velocity day in, day out. Um, I'm picking about up about an extra sub per day at the moment. Um, and then uh, every time someone subscribes to me, what you probably don't realize is I actually go when I get a notification, because some people have the subscription notifications disabled, so I just get anonymous subscriptions. When I actually do see a name, um, I actually do go off and visit your channel um, because I'm looking for a couple of things. Do you have anything, any interesting con content? Because I subscribe to over a thousand people on YouTube um, and I, I, I hunt high and low and go to extreme lengths to find new and interesting content related to mini Z's. So do you have any interesting content? Um, and it doesn't even have to be Mini Z related. Um, it could be RC cars in general, it can be engineering, um, just entertaining stuff. Um, and if I like it, I subscribe. And a lot of people thank me for that. And to be honest, they really don't. Uh, they're providing something interesting and that's more than enough for me. Um, okay, so we need the sixes. Didn't need a TB. Yeah, I need one TP. Um, and you don't even have to post content regularly. Like, if you've got six or seven videos and you haven't updated in two or three years, you can almost be guaranteed that I'm just going to go through and watch every single one of those videos. And more than likely, I'm going to leave a comment as well. What I found interesting, what I think could be better. I really like providing feedback. And more importantly, actionable feedback. It's not enough to just say, oh, hey, this was good, or hey, this was bad. It's like, why was that good or bad? Um, what's a cheap, and I'm definitely going to put emphasis on cheap way to uh, improve things. 
um, because not everyone has a ton of money. Um, so, I mean, it could be as simple as, hey, rather than a piece of paper you're drifting around, why don't you try and drift around an apple instead? Um, I haven't given that advice, but that might actually be helpful to you. Um, although, I mean, Kyoshi does provide the mini cones and they are pretty awesome. So, how does that go together? Does it go on top like that? Okay, and then I sort of lever it. Oh, okay, and it just slides on. Yeah, it's interesting. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really about helping people, um, jump on their channels, provide some advice. A couple of people have said, hey, look, <laughs> you really need to fix the exposure in your camera because the, like, while I love your race, racing footage, those mini art, mini Zs are just blurs and I can't out, actually make out anything they're doing. Um, and racing footage especially, I actually want to see the tires turning. Um, I might be trying to work out how you're tackling the corners and if you're oversteering or understeering. And if your car is nothing but a blur, that becomes a bit difficult. But um, I mean, if you really want some feedback, just prov provide a link to your YouTube channel or your videos in the, uh, the comments below. And I'll just go off and watch them all and provide feedback. Um, and as I said, it's got to be actionable feedback. Uh, it's got to be good feedback. Um, I actually have run teams of people located around the world. And it's not enough to just say that's good or bad. You actually have to tell them why that was good or bad and how they can improve. Um, they may come to the conclusion on their own or come up with an answer, but um, just saying, like, you suck, for example, which you see in a lot of YouTube comments is um, not really productive. I don't mind if you say I suck, but you need to tell me exactly why I suck. It doesn't even have to be justification. It just has to be an opinion. Uh... Okay, so we can work on the sidebars for the battery mounts. I should be eating, but I'm going to do a bit of extra work tonight and try and make up some lost ground. So that all looks like steering. battery. So yeah, I, I, I'm still not 100% sure how I need to advertise it, like, and advertise a channel. I definitely need to change the content up a bit. Um, I do want to stream twice per week, one being a, just a general open session that's normally drifting, but if I have build stuff like this, I'll do it. If there is a build, then you can almost be guaranteed a video per night, just because I, I like to pump them all out in one go. If I stop a project and move on to something else, that causes me a whole lot of issues, and that those issues are normally in regards to space to store projects. Um, it's very easy for things to go missing. So, um, and then uh, I want to do a more serious technical talk on the like the Friday. So, okay, and that goes like that. That goes into that. But I need to put one of these plates on first. Not that plate. It looks like it's that one. Right. And you are attached with an M24KB. I can actually feel myself perking up a bit, but I'm not going to push the envelope tonight, today with the build. That would be a massive mistake that will just leave me too tired to worry about work. Cool. Uh, let's screw that in. Plastic on plastic, and that threads in nicely. It's what I like to feel. Push that back. Oh, the lighting setup was working pretty well today. So I think I mentioned uh, I'll be moving the camera when I get some more storage space. Um, expecting that to storage stuff to arrive tomorrow but I'm not gonna have it set up till the weekend anyway so how does that go that goes like that and that goes on the outside okay cool um, but I'm definitely looking forward to that because I've got a lot of stuff that needs sorting 
Um, and then I've got a whole lot of small little plastic bags that I've accumulated from my builds that I need to throw out. And now that I have the proper storage space, I don't need to keep those bags around anymore, which is important. It's amazing how much stuff you accumulate over the years. And then I'd actually like to start looking for a new place that's got area for a track to be just set up permanently. Currently the, the track you see on my drift videos is just set up in my living room. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to do that, but how do they screw in? Don't tell me that's just a friction. Maybe that's just friction. Yeah, so I wouldn't mind a garage or just a second bedroom. Um, and it'll be a good opportunity to throw a whole bunch of stuff out. Is there a screw on the bottom? Oh yeah, okay. God, I need to read that diagram correctly. Because uh, I also want to get a crawler course, so a garden would be nice. Um, but I've actually got some stuff set up outside to do a crawler course. Um, I was doing some, I was going to plant some stuff, but I unfortunately I entered the season, I got the planters a bit too late to grow anything this season. So maybe next season, I've got some ideas. I wouldn't mind growing some soybeans because they make a great snack and they're relatively easy to grow in this weather, or at least in the Australian weather. So that could be a good one. And then in between all those, I just set up a crawler, tra crawler course. That should also attract some wildlife to the area because we get a lot of uh, lorikeets uh, and that sort of thing in the area. And they're absolutely magnificent, the colours on them. Let's back that out a bit, I think. Try and re put that back in the hole. No, really not liking me. Back that out a bit more. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm going to pull that out completely, I think. Uh, yeah, so a lot of plans, a lot of things to do. Marketing is important, but also I should say, Marketing is not the highest priority for me. Um, I research it because I'm interested in it and trying to work out how to do it properly. But uh, if I've got other priorities, I just focus on that. It's more that I do it by mistake <laughs> than anything else. Um, but funnily enough, the uh, one thing that really made the channel take off was, I'd love to say it was swapping over to the new style builds. Uh, the new style of videos with the having the build and everything but to be honest it was probably because I was the right person at the right time with DRZV2 builds no one was uploading any content I got the uh, the chassis really really early well not early but um, I'm in Australia at the moment so the shipping from China and Hong Kong is exceptionally quick um, especially if you order express it can be here overnight basically and so I, I had a uh, Probably about a 24 hour jump on most people. Um, so if you're looking to get the numbers, that's a trick. Um, get ahead of people by being at the right, right place at the right time and then uploading content related to that. Because there's, there's a lot of people at the moment looking for DIZV2 stuff. Um, not so many people looking for GLD, according to my numbers. But that's starting to increase, I believe. Um, I've had a couple of questions about how the GLD compares to the uh, DRZ-V2. Um, I definitely like the GLZ, the GLD, sorry, uh, more. Can't quite put my finger on it, but everything's just that slightly bit more polished and nicer. Um, I can't really point to specific things, but I've definitely done a lot less calibration work, for example, to get the rear shocks uh, working nicely. Okay, that goes on top. Guessing that's to hold a battery in, not too sure. 
Okay, so that's done, that's done, that's done, that's all done. We're on to swing arms. Can I stomach this? Or do I want to be stomaching food? Let's just dive into it and see how far I get in before I get frustrated. I'm going to need those anyway. So I'm going to need that. I think I need the part that I knocked off earlier. Great one. That's, yeah. There's, a, there's actually not enough room here to do a thumbs up, would you believe? I've actually got everything in very, very, very tight. Um, and I did adjust the focus. Oh, here it is. I did adjust the focus earlier. Um, I did back out the focus one notch. And it did seem a bit sharper. And just looking at the camera, it still seems a bit sharper. Like, yeah. I think 30 is adequate here. When, I've when I'm working in front of my PC and I've, you see the white table, um, I normally have 25, but that's even closer. Um, now this is actually a wide angle webcam I'm using as well. So if you're using a standard webcam, um, you'd have to back it way, 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 way off. Okay, so this is reverse threaded. This is tricky. I do want to get a top-down cam as well and offer different camera perspectives. Um, I actually wouldn't mind having the, ca the webcam from my perspective looking forward that way. Um, just because that's what I've been optimizing for my builds as of late. Um, you're not necessarily seeing what I'm doing with my hands here. So, wow, that lighting's really working quite well. And in fact, I didn't actually put the full lighting on. Um, I'm not even going to bother. The lighting's just perfect today. I was wondering why I was seeing some shadows in my direction, but you probably can't see them on camera, so... But yeah, I think from my perspective, um, may make uh, the visibility of what I'm doing a bit better. Okay, we're going to grip you from the side and twist you and put the pin in. Now, if you don't have a pin like this, um, you can just use an Allen key. The Allen keys they provide are not likely going to be thin enough, but hopefully you've got something nice and thin laying around. Um, I've got a really a bunch of small Allen keys that are for very, very specific models, and I tend to use them a lot. Um, and you can tell I use them a lot because a lot of them are bent in the middle. Cool, that's going on nicely. I'm liking the, yeah, once again, you can't see it because it's behind the instructions, but um, these kits to store the tools in, they were just a temporary measure. Um, but I just realized some stationery would be all you'd need to um, make things a bit more presentable. Um, they're definitely not the right shape, but I've got a proper tool holder coming. I do have a really, really, I want to say nice, but it's actually, in practice, it hasn't turned out to be that nice. Um, it's just uh, five plates of carbon fiber held together by um, some poles and some screws. And that looked impressive, but when I started to use it, it, um, the, it just didn't match the tools I had. Um, whereas I've got a new one on order that's uh, all steel and all the hole sizes are exactly the same and it should be significantly better. Because like, having good tool placement actually makes this process a lot easier and a lot more straightforward. Um, I've had someone say, how can you do that? How can you talk like this um, and build the model at the same time? And it's because I don't have to think about building the model. And that's the reason I don't have to think about the building the model is because the uh, I've got all the tools I need, which is a massive win. Um, I've done it before, and I know a couple of tricks. 
and my hands are not shaking too badly today. Um, like if I if I had my old hand jitters, I, I could only imagine how annoying this uh, um, ball head uh, capture stuff would be. Uh, Eighteen point eight. Uh, it's 19 and then we just go slightly inside from that so we're measuring from the outside so I put it on the flat side and we're in way too far so let's back that out there we go two turns one two slightly more than two turns but that's fine it's perfect this one I have to back out one turn if I eyeball it and I bet I got it right no I'm horribly off or am I yes I was horribly off okay that's fine Oh, I'm turning the wrong way, that's why. And that should be oversized. There we go. Yep, I'm going to take that as a win. Okay. So the one thing I do notice about the um, the measurements for the GL Racing is that the numbers from the caliper and the, the total size seem to be a lot closer together than the atomic ones. There's a lot less guessing. Okay, so it goes like that. May have to shave that down, but we're going to see how we go. Does it come in from the front or the back? It comes in from the back. Yeah, we're gonna shave that down. There's my sandpaper. There's the edge of my table. Okay, so I probably should be chatting a bit more because hopefully you're not getting bored, but that's likely not to be the case. So, uh, what else do we have to talk to or talk about? Um, upcoming projects, do I have any? Um, I do have an RPN racing build I could do uh, 2.5W. Yeah, 2.5W. I have all the parts for it, um, and if, to be honest, there is. I've had the parts laying around for ages and I was only eyeballing it the other day but I've got two MRO3 Evos one is completely stock and the other one is modified um, and I specifically did that so that I could have a well stock and modified um, not that there's any racing at all around here but um, if there was then I would be prepared for it and there's no reason I can't start my own racing club, and I'd like to do that as well, but just not at this time. Um, I was looking at commercial properties the other day and trying to work out if the numbers match up for that, but not too sure about that. Okay, that's still loose. Yep. Still loose, that's good. Uh, yeah, so commercial properties, that, that sort of thing. Um, but the if I have the MR03, I don't know if it's worth having the e both Evos as well. So I don't know what I'll do with that. I do like the uh, flipped upside down uh, battery chassis. That's a major reason why I, I picked it up. Maybe I could just modify the Evo and just chuck, just do that one part rather than the, the full setup. Um, yeah, I might do that actually. We'll have a look. I've got some suspension options coming for that um, from a couple of places actually. Uh, and I'm very, very interested to see how they all compare. Um, 
it's so hit or miss with uh, Mini Z parts. Some of the parts just work brilliantly and don't require any effort. And then some of them are an absolute slog to get working. Okay, and that goes like that, I think. So it'd be interesting to go off and compare all the front ends because some, some of the front ends I've got, I hunted high and low on eBay, various stores, um, everywhere I could think of to try and locate them. And then many times they just weren't that impressive. Um, like the default, uh, like the metal upgrades for the stock setup are probably pretty good in most cases. Um, but there are a couple of nice ones like this uh, double uh, suspension double wishbone suspension setup for the MRO3. I've got the A uh, all-wheel drive one and that was a brilliant upgrade. Don't know if it justifies the amount of money you pay for it though. That, that's the only problem but uh, if you're trying to edge every single piece of performance out of it, it may actually be worth it. So we're going to do a test for the ball ends because we know that they've been a problem in the past. Okay that one's good. And how about the other side? Don't worry, I'll move it all in closer now. Okay, so let's do that. Now that should just go on the top. Oh yes, it clicks in. I do like how everything is keyed on uh, this chassis. TVs, okay. Uh, that's definitely helped to make things a lot simpler. Um, Everything clicks into place and clicks into place very solid, solidly. Um, and I think that's why I, I prefer this chassis uh, to the Atomic. Like this chassis really feels like it was designed by someone who builds these on a regular basis. Perfect. And I mean, I'm applying barely any force and that's going in straight, so. Perfect. Rotate that for the caster. Take that and align that. So, let's see if I can find It's looking good. Just trying to work out what the maximum steering angle is. It looks to be about that. I don't know if that's impressive or not. Maybe it is actually. I don't need massive amounts of uh, steering angle. I'm kidding myself that I do, but in, in reality, I'm not that good yet. Um, so let's. I mean, this car definitely has potential. Um, I could see myself using it down the road. Actually, is that not a hex piece? Oh, it is. Okay, cool. So, twist like, oh, yeah. And I mean, I, I can rotate the opposite one, and the entire steering assembly is really, really nice and smooth. So, that's good. Definitely not perfect, but that's not due to the GL racing stuff. That's due to what I've done. Um, okay, that's looking good. And if we apply force on one and then try and twist the other, the other arm doesn't rotate, which is good. There is a bit of flex, but nothing too major. And I think I can actually fix it up by tightening up the uh, some of the steering assembly. So that is good because I was having issues with the uh, the swing arm on that side on the Atomic. So that's a good sign that the GL Racing is um, exactly what I want. Cool. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to call it a night for the moment. Uh, expect more from me. Uh, hopefully I'll have better conversation points next time. But um, the real problem is that I'm doing 10 or 11 hour shifts at the moment at work um, and that's taking its toll. So don't necessarily expect a good conversation, but uh, still hope you get something out of it. So see everyone later and uh, keep on building.